in Vermintide, the Sister of the Thorn wall ability should, in theory, not let enemies pass through it. But there are actually conditions that cause enemies to simply pass through the wall. Broadly speaking, this is when there is an area in the geometry that is coded for allowing enemies to do a jump, a climb up, or a climb down. And this is true in areas where it might not be readily apparent that this was intended by the developers. What I mean by that is right here, you would think there wouldn't be a climb up um, or climb down or jump sort of animation here. But it turns out there is, and that allows enemies to pass through the wall. For instance, if you have, don't want to spawn, anything like that, something like this, right? have some enemies here, they shouldn't be able to pass through that wall, but in reality, they can, because there's a jump animation coded, and as you see, when the wall fell, they were all doing that jump animation. The reason why they didn't all just jump through at once is because the wall kind of has an aggro system, where a lot of the enemies will actually aggro onto the wall and try to attack it. The ones that didn't aggro on the wall, well, they just tried to jump through. Now, there's a way to kind of magnify this effect. That's is if there's an environmental effect, like fire, warp fire, either from a storm fiend or an exploding fire rat, or, you know, a firebomb, a con flag, something like that. Those trigger animations, specifically the jump animation, will be triggered. If there's a region where the jump animation has been coded, and there's an environmental effect, the jump animation takes priority. So I can demonstrate that if I select an enemy that will not immediately die to the firebomb, on this difficulty, such as a Storm Vermin. I can show what I mean. Spawning a bunch of these things, dumping a firebomb, walling. You will see all of them jump right on through that wall in a line. That is because jump animations, climb ups, and climb downs phase through the wall, and environmental effects uh, exacerbate that. Gas rats and storm fiends can cause huge issues with walls because you can't control those. Storm fiend, and you're not expecting there to be a jump animation, and suddenly enemies are just phasing through your wall when you're fighting that boss. And again, these jump animations are not in areas you'll necessarily expect them, like right here, and there's other ones on other parts of maps. Now, to demonstrate the climb up, you have some enemies here, but the wall, you can see that they will climb up well in advance of that wall already going up. It seems to kind of sometimes deter some of them, but I mean, it really doesn't deter a lot of them. This also works, I'm not gonna show, but on a drop down location as well. Now, there is actually another property of the wall that is extremely useful. The wall is a nav mesh. There is no pathable or navigable location coded onto the wall. That means any enemy falling onto the wall will die, unless it's a monster and there is a location nearby within pretty close of a radial distance of comparable height. A monster that falls on the wall will actually teleport to it. Otherwise, you can actually kill a monster by like knocking it onto a wall. For instance, if I put a wall down here and knocked a rat ogre onto it, uh, the rat ogre would actually teleport over there. But if that wasn't there, it would die. However, for other enemies, there is not the radial distance check. Non-monsters, non-bosses that are pushed onto a non-navigable location simply die. What that means is with Fat Shark's latest intelligent decision to add the bulwark into the game, everyone's favorite enemy. Just kidding, this thing's a piece of shit. Never should have been added. The game is literally just solely worse off since they added this thing. So that's pretty cool. But if you're a sister enjoyer, and you know what you're doing, you can delete these things real easily by simply lifting them and placing a wall under them. For instance, we have some of these things over here. Place a wall, and I got two of them with that. They were within it, and they die. Now, the wall can do funky things when you try to nav mesh them. It's some sort of collision simulation that Fat Shark did to their typical fat shark standard where sometimes when you try to do this nav mesh enemies will either a 
fall onto the ground like they normally do at the end of a lift and then slide all the way across the map. Sometimes, like, all the way over there, they'll just slide. Other times, we'll just teleport. You don't know where they end up. They might teleport behind you, and then they'll stand up eventually and kill you. So, just some things to look out for with the wall tech. Now, another tech that I didn't mention is what's referred to as QQing. Basically, it's just swapping your weapon. And if you swap twice, right, you end up back on your normal weapon if you have the button, if you want to see it. For me, it's E. And I also have Q bound to E on my keyboard, so I can use both Q on my keyboard and E, but of course it's both bound to E. Weapon quick swap. You press this button twice, and you end up back on your weapon. Why does that matter? It's because it basically lets you animation cancel, right? Here's the staff. If I just try to left click, that's how quickly I'm attacking. But if I QQ, or in my case E, twice in between hits, I can attack at this speed. Let's see. Uh, messed up. I'm bad at this game, apparently. But by doing this, your attack speed goes up very fast. Something to make fun of or, you know, have some fun with in verses. Don't ask my my elf is bald or why I'm level 35.9. These are questions I will not answer. But if you have a weapon like this in verses, you will be called, apparently, a hacker on the Fat Shark forums, which actually did happen. Which is pretty funny. It wasn't me that got called it though. It was someone else. And in the official Discord. Which was... You know. Content to say the least. But... Where the fuck's the fireball stuff? Alright. You can do it with other weapons. Not just the staff. Here's your normal speed. UQ. And uh... Yeah, increase your attack speed. This applies to melee weapons as well, but I'll put in the description, there's a spreadsheet, and one of the things on it is weapon attack speeds. Because basically, not every weapon is going to benefit from QQing. For instance, Executioner Sword, you don't get increased attack speed by QQing. Block Cancelling is actually your best strategy. So that'd be the, like the second tech, QQing and block cancelling. Block cancelling is where you do an attack and then immediately block, right? And for the Executioner Sword, it's actually faster to do this than it is to chain heavies, which is really weird because you would think, right, like chaining heavies is more dangerous, right? You're not blocking. Like if you're fighting Chaos Warriors and you're just spamming heavy attack, like you're less safe, but you're actually slower. You have less DPS, which is really weird because usually you would, you know, risk reward trade-off. But no, with this weapon, heavy block cancel is faster than chaining heavies, and it's also faster than QQing. So, let's, uh, let's do one more class. Why not? What's a QQ tech? A funny one. Oh, right. Double melee careers. When you have a double melee career, you can single weapon swap to get the same animation canceling effect. So if you have, like, two dual axes... You can attack, swap, attack, a swap, right? You don't have to QQ, right? You just switch once. And would it let you attack at this speed, basically. And of course, I don't use macros, but there are people that will use macros and then just like run around with this on like Twitch mode. And it looks like you're just attacking super fast. And you know, it is what it is, but it is a part of the game. So another mechanic is how stagger cleaves, basically weapons that were coded properly, and dare I say as intended, have stagger that drops off. What do I mean when I say that? I mean you can't just hit infinite enemies and simply stagger all of them. So if you have the cog hammer, that's a great weapon for demonstrating this, like that. And you have a right over. Yeah, let's stagger that with a cog hammer. I'm sure that'll go wonderful. You have some of these things, and we can turn the AI back on. We're not doing lingering flames anymore. Thank God. Oh my God, I almost died. And you attack. You'll see that I'm staggering all of them when I actually have all of them in range, right? Actually, I'm missing one of them because I'm at that break point. If I spawn a lot more in, I'm not going to... 
all right in hindsight doing that on c3 um you know it is what it is so if i spawn a lot of them i'm not gonna stagger all of them with one strike right i'm gonna go attack and you see a lot of them don't get staggered that's because like normal cleave you can't hit through all the enemies at once same thing with stagger you can't stagger all the enemies at once that's if your weapon is coded properly that does not hold true for shield bashes and pushes what do i mean by shield bashes well obviously i mean if you attack with a shield like this thing right here an iron breaker but it's also on things like the blunder boss the flame storm the, or the the fire sword the blunder boss is probably the best example of this though if i switch right, to something that might on. have a blunder boss or i'll have to make one xd uh blunder boss why is it so far down on my menu? You'll see that these weapons, the shield bash weapons I just described, are broken. And you can cleave through an infinite amount of enemies with these weapons. For instance, if I spawn a lot of these things, no amount of them will prevent me from staggering them. Of course, if you have an enemy that like isn't staggerable, like a, a Chaos Warrior, has too much resistance for this thing to stagger. You're not going to stagger them. What I mean is the stagger cleaves through every enemy. And this also holds true for push attacks, or just pushing in general. You'll see that no matter how many enemies there are, you can simply push all of them that are in range. Because pushes have infinite cleave for those in range. But there's a, two reasons I mention this. One is for versus. The push having infinite cleave actually means that the easiest way to get an assassin off someone is always by pushing. This is true for official realm as well. Like, how do you get an assassin off of someone the easiest way? It's always going to be pushing because it doesn't matter how many enemies are in the way. Imagine like someone's assassin right here. If you just push, even if there's a Chaos Warrior right here, your push will literally go through a Chaos Warrior to push an assassin away. Or even like a monster. You can push an assassin off of someone through a monster if you're close enough just by pushing. And the second reason is, if there's a Sister of the Thorn Wall, pushes and shield bashes actually go through the wall. So if there's like a Sister Wall in front of you, and there's a lot of enemies behind the wall... Right, if you just try to attack with your weapon through the wall, you can't hit them, right? Unless the enemies are clipping through the wall, you can't hit them. But if you do a shield bash or a blunder bus or a fire sword, you can actually hit through the wall and farm temp HP through a wall, right? You have someone disabled, you can literally push through all of them to get it. Oh, I guess I do need to turn the AI on. As you can see, I can push that thing through the enemies like that. And that is the value of knowing how Stagger Cleave works, and that it's infinite on pushes and bashes, including weapons like the Fire Sword, the Blunderboss, and I think actually the Griffin Foot as well.